I rasta de noha tiasa ongo hawaka. Ongo hawaka o tapione ono de waga. So again, I just said my nation, my clan, my name, and we welcome all of you to this uh, evening tonight. And we welcome to you to the land of the people who cared and shared and welcomed others. And that's the way our people always have been. And we'll continue that by extending our hand of friendship to all of you here today. Big River, Saskatchewan. I'd like to welcome my fellow brothers here that are Cree. And uh, this issue is not only a, a one nation issue. Um, this concern that we have involves every nation that there is who ever migrated and traveled using the Great Lakes systems. This area that we're concerned with is a resting ground for our relatives. When they made those journeys and did the migration patterns to follow food, to support their families, they traveled those waterways and some didn't make the journey. So for those that didn't make the journey, they had to be put in a place and laid to rest. So who knows how many nations are down there in High Park? There's not just one nation, there's every nation that ever made that migration pattern. So it's not only one nation's concern, it's all nations' concern. And that's something that we all have to take into consideration, that we're not fighting here as individuals for, for one subject, we're fighting here as a collective group to support all those who made that place their final resting place. Hi, hi. So we have all kinds of documentation to prove our stance on the sacred sites in Hyde Park. Uh, we uh, were approached by the city to gather this documentation years ago. Some of us that were involved at that time were more used to learning things orally by going to ceremony and participating in those ceremonies. And some of the, a lot of the knowledge that I've received over the years has come that way, from going to ceremony and participating in those ceremonies, and not so much by what's written down in books. History is broken down to parts. His story, that's what I've been told. So, his story is not necessarily our story. So we're here tonight to tell our story about these sacred places. There's a lot of documentation that we've collected, but there's also documentation out there that goes against everything that we're gonna tell you tonight. There are people that are out there that are working, one specifically who has been fighting against our cause by the name of Ron Williamson, who is a licensed archeologist at one point, but over the last 11 years. 11 years, he hasn't held a license. And the City of Toronto has employed him to do their work, to do the testings, to examine what we claim is in Hyde Park. So you will hear other information than what we're giving you. As with everything, there's always people that are gonna give you conflicting stories. So what we're gonna present to you tonight, we're gonna give you the information that has been passed down from the faith keepers, from the chiefs, from our ancestors. Traditions and oral traditions that we know to be true. What you read in the history books is what's been put in there by the members of the government that they want people to know. That ne doesn't necessarily mean that's the truth because that's told from one point of view. So why we're letting you know this is because you will hear other people say that there is nothing in Hyde Park. You will hear them say, it's just a bunch of dirt that's there. But for those of us who have carried this knowledge and heard this knowledge from the time we were just starting to walk, we know that this is what's there. These are our ancestors who were laid to rest there. And as long as there's one ancestor there, we're going to fight for that ancestor because they deserve the respect just as everybody else does. This is an article documenting the 1922 uncovering of burials that um, was found in the Toronto archives. This is public available information. And Robert Orr was the one who did this report. And he uh, first reported 
these things back in 1885, starting. And the Globe and, or not Globe and Mail, but the Mail at that time was the one that archived and printed these type of articles about burials in Hyde Park. Now, these particular burials were found up in this area here. And there are also some found along this end of the park when they put Lower Street through. And this here is where the Bear Mound is at right now. It's been there for 3,000 years. And there's also a series of other mounds in this same area, about 12 in that general area. And um, the water used to come, this is what this is, this is water, used to come in here. And um, so 3,000 years ago, the landscape was slightly different. But uh, the Bear Mound is an advantage point. It's in a high point where when you're on top of it, you can see out to the lake. So not only what is a, a sacred ceremonial burial site, but it was also a vantage site. And the old people put the mounds in places like this, high places, where they could see. And sound would travel. And that was a basic thing with, with the mounds everywhere in North America. They always put in places where sound would travel. So when our ancestors would be at these places, they would play certain types of instruments that would carry that sound. One of them was a big, huge conch shell. It was taken on, on the one end, and they would blow on it, and it would sound like a big horn. And that sound would carry for a long way away. And one of the people that came to our ceremony in October brought one of those to the ceremony, just to see how that would be, you know, to hear that. And it echoed all throughout the whole park. I mean, it just vibrated throughout the whole park. So if you can imagine that going on at the same time at all the mounds everywhere, how that sound would travel. And that is also how our ancestors would sometimes send messages to other people. It's creating that sound. Other people that had been to this site over the course of years have seen the ancestors. They have the ability to see supernaturally what's going on there. And it's not just indigenous people, but it's non-indigenous people that have seen the ancestors standing around this place. Lots of them, hundreds of them. And they seem to be coming from all directions to come here. High Park is uh, two ravines that run north and south. They don't run into the Humber, they run directly into, into the lake. Which is another thing that's very special about this place, is the way the streams run through the park. That alone brought and attracted our people and many indigenous people from all directions to come here, to collect medicines, to bring medicines here leave them here. There are certain medicines in Hyde Park <coughs> that are very rare to find elsewhere in the city. And one of those is sassafras. Sassafras is something that grows more to the south. And we've located a few sassafras trees in the park on the east side and the west side, which is a part of that medicine that was brought from the south, and people got it here, which makes it another reason why it's a special place. It's not just because there's burials there. Because this site 
is connected with the whole system of sites. These are the Hopia people, and they had a great network of mounds that went all the way up on the side of Lake Ontario and the other side of Lake Ontario and all the way down into the other side of that imaginary line. Yeah. And these people had a very huge trade network that connected to other trade networks that went far to the west and far to the north, east and south. We found evidence of of different items in the park that come from faraway places. This is a particular plate that was buried in one of the mounds in Ohio. And the person down there extracted it from the mound just to show us that this image is very similar to the snake mound here in Ontario in High Park. So this is made out of pine resin and uh, earth. And then the uh, ancestors would bury these plates in the mounds to identify what they were. So he, he extracted that and took it back and reburied it again. And this is to help us appear, to prove that this is what this is. This image was taken from Google Earth. It's a 2006 image where you can see the curvature here and there. This is the area that's being uh, destroyed by the BMXers here. This map that we created shows other locations of snake or serpent mounds, and they're all in a line. That's the Serpent Mound in Ohio. That's the Bear Mound, High Park. Thunderbird Mound, and of course the Snake Mound is right down in here in the same line. And then you have the Serpent Mound over by Keene, Ontario. So again, you know, the city in an article a few years ago said that um, Bear Mound was not scientifically proven. This is a part of Native North American astronomy and science very old science. This is how our people knew where they were at when they traveled, is these sites were put in places that line up with the constellations and the planets in the sky at certain times of the day and the year. And they, they recorded times of, of uh, harvest and are doing our ceremonies and so on.